Okay, so I've had the Pocket 2 for a couple weeks now, and I really enjoy using the newest version of this camera. Now, there's not a lot of difference between the Osmo Pocket and the Pocket 2, but there are enough differences that we should look at some of the best settings for your new camera. So, if you just bought the Pocket 2 and you're wondering what are some of the better settings to get the best shots out of this camera, this video is for you. Let's take a look at some of the best settings for your Pocket 2. That's two, not peace. Although, wishing everyone peace at this time of year would not be a bad thing. Hey there, I'm Dave and this is Red Arrow Media. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate taking the time to tune in to this video. Now this video is called Best Settings for the Pocket 2. But when it comes to best settings of any camera, it's a judgment call. So I don't want anyone to get mad that my best settings aren't the best settings for you. Whatever your best settings are, are the best settings for you. The more you use this camera, the more comfortable you will be with this camera and your shots will reflect that. This camera is one of those cameras that are a little bit odd to use and a little bit frustrating sometimes, but once you get used to using this thing, it's gonna give you some fantastic footage and maybe this video will help you with those settings. All right, so let's get right into the video. My favorite setting of all is the 4K 60 frames per second. Now we're talking about frame rates here and I love shooting 4K 60 frames per second if I'm gonna slow down my footage. Now the reason we do this because you're maximizing this sensor. The sensor is bigger than the Osmo Pocket sensor so you wanna maximize as much of that image as you can. So shooting at your highest frame rate and at your best possible quality, that's what you're gonna get. Now I also love shooting when I'm talking on the camera in 4K 24 frames. That's just me personally, I love the look of 24 frames. Don't fight me on this because I know a lot of people are very passionate about frame rates. I'm not one of them. I shoot 24 frames a lot of times and if I'm gonna slow it down and get some nice B-roll, I will shoot 60 frames. It's not a big deal what frame rate you choose. However, I would suggest shooting in 4K if you can. Now, there are a lot of drawbacks in shooting 4K with the Pocket 2. It takes up more data, it kills your battery, it heats up a whole bunch of reasons maybe not to shoot in 4K, but for me, I have found my favorite way to shoot with this camera is 4K, and I just make sure that I have enough battery life and that it doesn't heat up too, too much so that it's not hot to the touch, and I think you're gonna be okay. Now, let's talk about slow motion on this thing. It's been upgraded from 120 frames to 240 frames. That's awesome for a little camera like this. However, I would suggest the best settings is 120 frames on this camera. Now, if you're shooting outdoors, maybe you can push it to 240 frames and you're gonna slow down on that footage. It's gonna look awesome. I love footage that's really slowed down when you're outdoors, whether you're playing sports or air, anything that you're gonna slow down outdoors. Now, the key is outdoors. I don't like using the Osmo Pocket or the Pocket 2 indoors when it comes to slow-mo. I think the fact that it crops in and the low light is not great on either one of those cameras. Now, it's improved on the Pocket 2, that's great, and it doesn't crop in as much. So if you're gonna shoot in slow mode, I suggest 120 frames, unless you're outdoors where you get lots of light and that shot can look good. But shooting at 120 frames is still pretty slow and it still looks pretty decent. Most of the times I shoot, like I said, in 4K 60 frames, then you can take that and slow it down and it looks really nice and smooth. All right, let's jump ahead to motion lapses, time lapses, and hyper lapses. The Pocket 2 does a great job with this. The Osmo Pocket did a great job and the Pocket 2 has just taken that and upgraded the features. Now you can change your timing on this. You can shoot five seconds, three seconds, one second, and I think it goes all the way up to 0.5 or half a second. Now that's amazing. That means it's gonna be taking photos that quickly if you're at half a second. However, if you're taking a long time lapse or a long motion lapse, you really wanna make sure you get your settings right. You're gonna to have to play around with the camera to find out what works for you, how long you want your time lapse or your motion lapse. I use the Pocket 2 a lot for motion lapses. I think it's a really cool feature and I like to play around with the look of it. I find sometimes if you shoot at a higher number, like five seconds, your video's much more choppy than it would be at a second or a half a second. However, sometimes, you're not gonna really notice that, and depending on how long you're shooting, you might wanna change it to five seconds or three seconds. I found with the Osmo Pocket, my sweet spot was around three, four seconds, but the Pocket 2 gives you a lot more options. So play around with it to get the exact best settings that you want for your motion lapses, your time lapses, or your hyper lapses. Okay, so now this is probably the most controversial part of this video, is the color profiles. You have two of them. You have Cine-like and you have 
color profile. I mean, they couldn't have come up with a more exciting name, color profile. Anyways, I would suggest for most people to shoot in the basic color profile. Now, why is that? Because Cine Like is more like log footage for your Canons or your Sony cameras or any other professional camera. The fact that you have something like this, a log footage setting is great to have in a little camera like this. However, I don't think it equals to S-Log or C-Log or anything like that. The Cine Like is great that it will give you a little bit more options for color grading. But to be honest, most of us aren't going to color grade our footage, or if they are, you can take that color profile and just add a little bit, add a little chroma, add a little saturation to get the shot that you want. If you nail your white balance, you shouldn't need to make a lot of adjustments when it comes to post-production for this. Now, I still do. I like to add a little bit of saturation and a little bit of contrast. That's just something that I like as a personal preference. But depending on what you're shooting, if you're using this video for a YouTube video or family videos, sure, you can go ahead and shoot in Cine Lake and then go ahead and color grade that stuff. But for me, it's just an extra step that you really don't need to. Now, I don't think most people really enjoy color grading the footage on the pocket too. I know for sure there are some that really love that because you can get that control of the image that you want using that bigger sensor, that better image, and now you have better control of that image. Great. If you wanted to do that, fantastic. However, I suggest most people just shoot in the regular color profile. Make sure you bang your white balance so that it looks good because that's probably the biggest thing and your ISO. If you have the image looking good into your camera, you're going to look good when you come in post-production. But if you want to go ahead and color grade it, that's great. Go for it. That's why they gave us Cine Like. So when it comes to your best settings for your color profile, I guess there really isn't. But I would suggest shooting in the color profile. Now, of course, just like the Osmo Pocket, the Pocket 2 gives you a couple choices when it comes to autofocus. You can use APC or APS. I normally use autofocus continuous APC to give you the shots that you want. Sometimes you want to use the singular and that's great. But for the most part, I would suggest using APC. Just make sure that you're touching the screen to get the autofocus on the area that you want. You don't have to touch it all the time. Just make sure when you change scenes or if you moved on to a different section, you touch the focus on the little screen to make sure that it's focusing on your subject and not something else. I think in the most part, it does a pretty decent job, especially considering it's such a small little camera. Now the best feature of the Pocket 2, of course, is the gimbal. That's why we bought this camera. We wanted a tiny little gimbal on a camera and this is it. You can't get anything smaller than this little gimbal on this little camera. So I love the fact that this camera has a tiny little gimbal to give you some really smooth footage. Now there are a bunch of different modes for your gimbals. I like to shoot in follow mode most of the time with tilt lock on. Now that's my personal preference. I like to have control of my gimbal. I don't like it moving all over the place as you would get with FPV mode. Now I suggest you do try in FPV mode because it will give you some very creative shots. I think just for most people though, having it in follow mode and tilt lock will give you some really nice shots that won't be moving around too much. So it'll give you a nice stabilization. Now, some people don't like to use tilt lock. That's fine. Sometimes I turn it off and I get some creative shots that I want. You kind of got to play with the different modes when it comes to your gimbal settings. But once you find one that you'd like, stay with it. Okay, so let's talk about audio. The audio has really improved on the Pocket 2. Let's face it, the Osmo Pocket did not have good in-camera audio. It had two mics, and lots of times you were covering up the mics with your thumb or a case or whatever. You weren't getting good audio from in-camera. Now, the Pocket 2 has four mics attached to it, so you have four in-camera mics. I'm no mathematician, but that's twice the amount of Microphones as the Osmo Pocket in the Pocket 2. Am I right? Two and four. Yeah, I, again, my math's a little off. But having those mics in this little camera does a pretty decent job. Now, I've done a test using the external microphone and the internal microphone. I gotta be honest, the internal microphone is pretty darn good. Now, it might not give you the exact results that you want, especially if it's windy out or there's other noises going around. Maybe an external mic will work better. But the fact that it has four mics and it does a pretty good job of picking up your voice and your surrounding areas by the simple in-camera mics, I think that's 
one of the settings you really take a close look at. Do you really need to use an external mic with this camera? Now, if you have the creator package which comes with the adapter and everything, that's great. You can get wireless mic on this and the wireless mic sounds really, really good. Now, I didn't get the creator combo feature because for me, I already have a very good wireless mic system. So if I want to use it with the Pocket 2, I just hook it up with the audio adapter and it works really, really well. However, that new feature for the Pocket 2 is great. It gives you the ability to have wireless mic on that camera is awesome. And to be honest, from what I've heard from that wireless mic, it's pretty darn good and very impressive. But if you don't want to get that upgrade and you want to just try out the camera, vlog with it and just have a simple setup, I think the internal microphones on the Pocket 2 have increased in function and they really, really work well. I think you're going to be happy with it and that might be all you need for getting good audio out of the Pocket 2. Now, of course, with the Pocket 2, you can adjust your audio settings. Most of the times I shoot with my audio settings set to medium. That way, I'm not going to go peak and I'm not going to be too, too low. I'm going to get something in the middle and I think it sounds pretty decent in the end. Okay, so thanks for watching and I really do enjoy using the Pocket 2. I think it's a great upgrade from the Osmo Pocket. Now, when it comes to best settings, like I said, it's a judgment call. But hopefully this video has helped you to get some better footage and some better usage out of your camera. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Go out and shoot something, will ya?